Along with our growing discussions of the internet, we started to hear a new term. That term is the Internet of Things, sometimes abbreviated as uh, IoT. There is a growing interest in this. There is growing research in this area. Um, so what is the Internet of Things? Um, well, to some degree, the Internet of Things is a buzzword, so you just keep that in mind. Uh, but the Internet of Things, you can think of as, to some degree, taking some of the visions of pervasive computing. So more computing embedded into the environment, lots of different devices that have general purpose computing capabilities, and adding to that the internet. So not only will these devices be around, not only will my whiteboard marker have a microprocessor in it, but my whiteboard marker will be connected to the internet. And you know this is a reasonable vision in some ways because we've seen with the internet how the internet transformed and was really required to realize the full capabilities of the computers that preceded it. So if we didn't have the internet today and we were just all using these computers, they'd be really powerful, but the internet has really sort of um, magnified their capabilities in a way that is, is difficult to comprehend. They just wouldn't be the same thing. You know, having a computer that's not connected to the internet, it's like a toy, maybe you do some like weird things if they play games or something like that, but even the games you play are with other people. So, you know, the internet really is what sort of was required to bring out the full uh, capabilities of existing computers, desktops, laptops, other things. And so I think there's this a sense within the world of people who work on pervasive computing that wouldn't be great if the internet had some sort of the same transformative capabilities on the vision of pervasive computing. And there's no reason to doubt that this is going to happen, at least in some way. So for example, I have a home security system. That home security system is, um, you know, to some degree, a realization of the vision of pervasive computing. Every one of those devices, uh, you know, has some sort of little computer running on it. They communicate with each other, um, and that's all well and good. If I bring that online, there's a variety of other interesting use cases that I can now uh, foresee. So for example, if there's some way for me to communicate over the internet with that home security system, I can do things like monitor my home while I'm away through a web browser. If I forget to arm the system after I leave the house, I can do that remotely, blah, 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 blah. So there are cases where you know connecting things to the internet in some way will really sort of open up these new uh, capabilities and some exciting new usage patterns. Now, and, and so we're, we're, you know, this is this vision of the Internet of Things. It's, it's not only bringing computational capability to many of the things around us, but also bringing them online. Uh, one thing that this gets very sort of uh, bound up with is IPv6, because obviously there is no way that we can bring these billions or trillions of new things onto the internet without a better addressing scheme. And so it's kind of, uh, I think the rise of the IoT will go along with our continued deployment of IPv6, because we need those addresses. We're already out of IPv4 addresses for actual human beings to use. If my toaster wants to get online, it shouldn't be taking an IPv4 address from a human being who wants to use it. Uh, so we need more addresses. IPv6 is going to solve that problem, so that's great. On the other hand, I think you, you know, when you think about the Internet of Things, at least to me, um, the big problem with this phrase is this part. So the Internet, I think, has many of the transformative capabilities it has because of human beings' desire to communicate with each other. I think you know we've always tried to communicate. We invented you know spoken and written languages uh, before the internet. We we tried desperately to find ways to communicate with each other over long distances, and a lot of time and energy went to that. And the internet is the ultimate fulfillment of that desire. Do we care as much about communicating with things? Am I going to have an interesting conversation or an interesting relationship with my refrigerator just because it's on the internet? So some of the, the use cases here feel a lot more quotidian. The idea that my refrigerator is going to automatically notice that I don't have milk and it's going to call the store and someone's going to come out to my house with milk. Okay, fine. I think it's a little bit more interesting that I can go online and find information about every part of the world. I can look up maps on my phone and navigate cities I've never been to um, in adventurous ways. I can reach out to people, go to new restaurants, find new experiences as a human being that bring me into contact with other human beings. So I'm skeptical that the Internet of Things is ever going to be as transformational as the Internet of People. 
but it is certainly something that we're going to live through, and it's something that's going to, I think, really reshape the world around us. This idea that not only are the things in our environment communicating, computing, uh, processing information, sharing it locally, but that they're connected to a broader computer network that's going to open up new capabilities.